Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Masters of the Universe Origins Skeletor, Evil Lord of Destruction. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there he is, Skeletor, best villain of the 80s. Don't at me. You know it's true. <laughs> of course, one of my all-time favorite characters, so I'm always excited to get a new Skeletor action figure, so let's dive right in and check this guy out. Now, of course, he does come on that new style blister card, which is kind of an old style blister card because it's meant to look like the packaging from the 1980s Masters of the Universe toy line, which I absolutely love. And by the way, I think the card backs feel really good. Um, it is a bit of a thinner material than, say, the card backs from the 80s toys. They definitely used a thicker card stock back then, but I still feel like this is uh, a pretty solid feeling uh, card back there. So if anybody's wondering that, if you're a mint on card card, collector. Uh, this is actually pretty nice, especially here in the blister bubble. This feels nice and solid, so that's real cool stuff. So it's got the red bursting rocks, the Masters of the Universe logo. Even though this line is called Masters of the Universe Origins, it doesn't say that on the front of the box. It just has that classic Masters of the Universe logo, which is pretty cool. Of course, the yellow burst, letting you know that there's modern posing and retro play because this is a, a retro styled action figure, so it's meant to look basically like it came out of the 80s, but they've added modern articulation like elbow bends, knee bends, there's no rubber bands in the legs anymore, so he should in theory stand up, so pretty cool stuff. And as you can see behind the figure, there is an included mini comic as well. When we rotate the box around to the backside, we have some beautiful new artwork at the top. The nefarious overlord Skeletor wants to control the power within Castle Grayskull. And then we've got the action feature callouts, just like on the vintage packaging, but since there's no actual action features, it's basically showing you that you can plug the Havoc staff into his hand and that you can articulate the figure. But still, it's a fun homage to the original line. And then we've got our cross cell, which, by the way, I love it because it's like artwork. Just like on the vintage toy line, it's not photographs of the toys. I think that's just a really neat touch. So all in all, it's beautiful packaging. It's definitely going to stand out, especially if you're a fan of the original line. But as nice as this box is, it's time to rip it open so we can get a closer look at Skeletor Within. Okay, so right out of the packaging, Skeletor does include a pack-in mini comic, but it is worth noting that it's the exact same mini comic that came packaged with He-Man, Beast Barrage. Uh, if you haven't already seen my video on He-Man, uh, just to give you a glimpse inside, it's not very long of a comic, but it does feature some brand new artwork featuring the evil warriors doing battle with the heroic warriors. Uh, we've even got some shadow beasts in there, so it's pretty cool. We got the cross cell on the back of the cover, but yeah, it's the exact same mini comic that also comes packaged with He-Man. I don't know yet if that means all the figures in the first wave have the same comic or not, but I guess we'll be finding out soon enough. Meow! <laughs> Here he is, my friend Skeletor, outside of the packaging. Let me bring in the tape measure to show you guys that he stands just a little bit over five and a half inches tall. Exactly what we would expect out of these guys. Uh, and even though they do have articulation now in places like the knees, it is worth noting that even with the legs straightened out as much as you can, it still has a bend to it just like the vintage action figure. So still has a little bit of a squat pose no matter what. But but you can bend the knees even more now, something that you could not do, of course, in the original action figure line. So the head sculpt on this one is pretty amusing. And honestly, I think they were kind of going for that look. Um, we've never really had a Skeletor figure with his mouth open like that before. And it does look kind of funny. Like it's got a bit of a comical meow kind of look to it. I don't know if that's what Mattel was going for, but that's definitely what I see when I look at it. He doesn't really look evil or sinister. He looks like the kind of like the goofy Skeletor, I guess we saw in the original cartoon series. Again, I don't know if that's what they were going for, but that's the way he comes across to me. Um, the paint is pretty good on the face on mine. You'll notice he's got the green around the edges, the yellow on the face. That of course is straight off the vintage action figure. He's got the red eyes, um, but we got these little lines painted on the mouth, which are supposed to be like for the teeth. I have seen some 
in photos online where those lines are up higher and it looks like he's got a mustache. <laughs> Luckily on mine, the lines are down actually on the teeth there, but that might be something you wanna watch out for, uh, especially when these are actually hitting stores proper and you can look through them on the pegs. Make sure you get one with a good uh, paint deco on the face. I do have a small blemish on the top. I got like a black mark on the green up there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, it's very, very minor. Uh, otherwise, the figure is very clean and very vibrant. He's brightly colored. He's got that bright baby blue colored skin and the deep purple scene there. And just like I mentioned with He-Man in that video, the colors on these figures are very basic as far as there's not a ton of paint deco going on here. The most paint deco you're gonna see on this figure is what's on his face. Um, because the rest of it here, like all of the armor he's wearing and the boots, they're cast in a purple plastic. The body's cast in a blue plastic. There are no extra paint details whatsoever on these guys. Um, and I think that's just part of that retro aesthetic that Mattel is going for. Um, they're kind of making these a little simplistic. They're not overly detailed with crazy paint decos like the Collector Masters of the Universe Classics line was. Like these are kind of intended to be a little more simple. So you got to kind of look at them for what they are. So I've mentioned the articulation and how it differs. Why don't we go ahead and run through that here really quick. The head is on a ball joint. You can actually see it's got a pretty good range of movement. It rolls all the way around. Of course, you can also turn that left and right. Uh, the shoulders are on those ball hinges so they can go outwards, forwards, backwards. You've got swivels at the elbow, nothing at the bicep cut, but swivels at the elbow and the bends at the elbow, swivels at the wrist and hinge joints at the wrist. There's nothing in the torso, but the waist can turn left and right. You got those hinge joints the thighs, the legs can go outwards, forwards, backwards. The knees can bend as well as swivel. You can also swivel there at the boot cut and the ankles move forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side. So definitely much more articulation than we saw in the original five and a half inch action figure line. So if you've ever wanted to pose around your vintage toys, this kind of gives you the option to do that. And the figure feels nice and sturdy. The articulation is nice and tight. You can see I have zero problem standing him whatsoever. Um, so all of that functions really well. Now, one of the other things definitely worth talking about with these figures, that's sort of like a hidden action feature because uh, it's not mentioned anywhere on the packaging, but all of the parts are removable at different points. You can pop the head off the ball joint, very similar to what we did with Masters Classics, but you can also pull the arm out of the socket at the shoulder. You can pull the wrists out of the socket there uh, pull, to pull the hands off. Uh, you can pop the <laughs> torso off at the waist and you can pop the boots off of the legs, just like that. So you can see they're all just pegs, like peg and sockets there, and they're all really tight, so you don't have to worry about them being loose or floppy or falling off or anything like that. But this is really cool because it's like an added level of play with these that allows for some really cool mix and match options, I think, as I've stated, that that's gonna be extra special for people who like to customize their toys because it's real easy to mix and match parts. Um, these guys don't come with any interchangeable heads or hands or anything, but who knows what the future holds. Maybe there are options for interchangeable heads and stuff down the road, since that's something that we got with Masters of the Universe Classics so uh, commonly. So speaking of that, speaking of Masters Classics, um, I definitely wanna show this. I showed it in the He-Man video as well, but just to kind of drive that point across, uh, this right here is the head of Skeletor from the seven inch Masters of the Universe Classics toy line. Um, just kind of looking at them side by side, you can see they are roughly the same size, but it is worth noting that the ball joint on the new figures is larger than that of Classics. So it's not something that you could just pop onto the figure. Um, maybe you could do a little bit of work on it. I don't know if maybe he it up. I don't know. It's a really big ball joint, so you might be able to push it on there if you want to, but it's definitely not something where you can just interchange the heads. It does not work that way. And in fact, if I bring in the classics body here, I could take the Origins head and I could put it on the uh, neck of the classics figure and you can see scale wise, it works, but it doesn't clip on that ball. It's a much smaller ball joint, so it's very loose there. So um, that is one thing that I have talked about already. I'll try not to repeat myself too much in every one of these Origins videos unless something changes, but I do kind of wish that Mattel would have thought about giving him the same size ball joints just because for those of us who already have a classics collection, that would have been like endless amounts of customization right out the gate as far as head swapping goes. 
All right, let's talk about Skeletor's accessories here. Uh, he comes with two, just like on the vintage action figure. We've got the Havoc Staff, and we've got the Sword of Power, the purple version of it. Um, so I talked about this uh, in the He-Man video, but it is just like He-Man's, except it is opposite. It's got the hand guard on the opposite side. And of course, it is a half power sword. Uh, this is the play into the gimmick from the vintage toy line, where the two halves of the power sword could combine together to become the the key to gain access to Castle Grayskull. That was the intended storyline for the original toy line that sort of got forgotten about back then. But it's cool to see him paying homage to that. Um, you'll notice that there's only the two pegs in kind of the middle of the hilt there. So the blades don't really come together. They're always kind of bent like that. Um, so it's fun. It's a fun gimmick. It's a neat homage to the vintage line. But just like I said in the He-Man video, I kind of wish we would have got a full power sword or at least as an extra accessory also got the full one um, because I've never been a fan, even in the vintage line, of my figures carrying around half of a sword. <laughs> Um, so Skeletor could hold that in his one gripping hand, though it is going to be backwards. I guess you could always just turn the hilt around so that, you know, the hand guard's not over the fingers. You could do that. Um, but you also have the option. He's got that kind of open hand there. And just like people used to always do on the vintage toys, you could always just run those fingers through the hand guard. And he can hold onto the sword that way as well. So that is an option for you. Um, unlike He-Man, he does not have an actual holster for the sword on his back. You got to do it old school and just kind of put it through the uh, armor there. <laughs> Which, by the way, look, the armor works just like the vintage toy. That's really interesting because He-Man's was kind of a new design, but this has got the same kind of clip and uh, little rungs on there, just like the vintage Skeletor action figure. So, of course, he also comes with the Havoc Staff, which, by the way, pretty much looks identical to the Vintage one, except it's a lighter purple. It's probably a little bit more flexible than that Vintage one, uh, so there's no additional paint. It's just casted in purple, but he can hold that very nicely with his gripping hand, and the new articulation actually does allow him to get a couple two-handed poses there, so that is pretty cool as well. All right, guys, it's comparison time. Let's go ahead and match our brand new Origin Skeletor up with the vintage Skeletor action figure. Of course, that is one of my all-time favorite action figures. So this is what the new one looks like standing alongside the original version that he is based upon. And let's go ahead and put them next to that Masters of the Universe classic Skeletor that we took a look at a little bit ago. This will really show you the difference in the scale as well as the difference in what they're going for with the paint deco because classics was supposed to be very plussed out and made directly for collectors while this new version is definitely simplified. And let's do some more mixing and matching just for fun. I wanted to put Skeletor alongside Vintage Panthor. Now, Panthor has not yet been announced for the new Origins line, but with Battle Cat coming, I think it's a given we're going to get Panthor eventually. But if you wanted to see what Vintage Panthor looked like with this figure, there you go. And I also matched him up with the Classics Panthor, which is way too big for him. But in case you were wondering, there you go. And we're going to even do more than that, because why not? Here he is in the vintage Rotan. And here he is in the Masters of the Universe Classics updated Rotan. We are going to be getting some vehicles in this line. Uh, Rotan is very possible because that's a favorite that Mattel likes to do for Skeletor a lot. But we already know we're getting the Sky Sled for sure. Um, so it's really going to be interesting to see how this line performs. Uh, Mattel definitely seems to be going for a new market with this because these are on retail pegs. These are going to be at Walmart starting this fall and then all stores starting next year. Um, so they're really trying to hit a market that they haven't tried to hit with Masters of the Universe since the 2002 era. Um, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this performs. Um, you know, they're going back to this kind of retro look with these, just with some modern articulation, but they're going all out with, you know, beasts like Battle Cat and vehicles like the Sky Sled. So it does have potential to pick up a new audience while also catching the attention of people who might remember He-Man, but didn't realize that we've had all these toys all these years on the internet. So it's going to be really interesting. But there you guys go. That is my look at the brand new Masters of the Universe Origin Skeletor. All in all, I think he's a solid figure. Um, it's weird, and I'm going to say this again. I said it 
in my He-Man video. So again, I'm trying not to repeat myself, but we just came hot off the heels of a 12 year long line that was geared directly to collectors. And I'm trying to remove myself from that and look at these objectively because these are supposed to be different from those. Um, I loved that classics line so much. And so, I'm trying to look at these in an objective manner, and this is a solid action figure. It functions really well, it feels really good. Um, the articulation is great, it's just different. So it's gonna appeal to some people, it's probably not gonna appeal to everybody, but that's toys, man. That's the way it works. Guys, I have to give a very special shout out to my friend Toy Bro because he hooked me up with this He-Man and Skeletor. Make sure you check out his channel if you are not already subscribed. He does lots of cool toy content over there as well. Uh, He-Man and Skeletor went in stock very briefly on Walmart.com and sold out instantly, but the official release date is fall and these are gonna be in stores as well. So don't panic yet, hang tight. These should be hitting store shelves for people to find very soon. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, leave me a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, my friends.